Hi, Bobcats. In this lecture, we're going to look at the formalisms around writing and balancing chemical equations. In the next lecture, we'll look at actual examples of doing it. Our objectives include distinguishing subscripts and coefficients, reactants and products, equations and formulas, and also to correctly use um, the notation that goes with balancing equation, uh, such as uh, writing in coefficients and the plus sign to separate reactants from other reactants or products from other products, and the arrow, which we'll call the yield sign. Most people have seen or at least heard of balancing equations before they get to this class. And so um, in a face-to-face -face class, I always like to ask this question. And uh, it's, it's interesting. Um, I do have a few people who really like balancing equations and they answer A, that's really easy. Uh, my personal take on it is B. Uh, some are really easy to balance, but some of them are really hard to balance. And for the purposes of this class, we're staying away from the hard ones. We're, we'll be working with the ones that are much more accessible. Back in chapter four, we learned how to write the formulas for compounds, ionic, molecular, and alkane. But um, we kind of glossed over how you write the formulas for elements, and we're going to need that for this chapter. So let's add in uh, to our nomenclature how we write formulas for elements. Most elements um, are monatomic. So that means when we write the symbol for the element, we're done, right? So the examples given here for iron, sodium, silicon, and carbon, we just write C for carbon, that's it. There are seven elements, though, that in their naturally occurring form exist as diatomic molecules. Diatomic means two atoms. So um, we have to write the formula for these seven elements with a subscript of two on them. These elements are bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. If you kind of slur together the, um, those element symbols, they spell a funny name, Brinkelhoff. So I'll refer to these elements as Brinkelhoff elements, and that's my way of saying, oh, well, when you write that, you have to put a two on it. If you locate these seven elements in the periodic table, they make sort of a seven over in the upper right corner of the periodic table, but hydrogen over there on the left side of the periodic table um, also um, is one of these Brinkelhoff elements. And also something I want to point out is that when um, we're talking about the Brinkelhoffs, the two only goes on the element when it's all by itself. If the element is involved in a compound, then other things will determine what the subscript is, such as the ionic rules or the covalent rules or the alkane rules. The subscript of two goes on these seven elements when it's just by itself, like if we're talking about O2 um, oxygen gas in the air. And then there are a few other elements that have um, something entirely different. Either we'll stay away from these, or in the statement of the problem, I'll say, oh, by the way, phosphorus is P4. Just a very quick review of how we write formulas for compounds. That was done extensively back in chapter four. For ionic compounds made of a metal plus a nonmetal, charges have to cancel out. So if they don't naturally cancel out, you have to crisscross. For covalent or molecular compounds, the prefix in the name tells you what the subscript will be on that element symbol. And for alkanes, we'll follow the pattern CnH2n plus 2, and the prefix in the name of the alkane tells you the value of n. For instance, if we're talking pentane, then n would be 5. I'd like to distinguish subscripts from coefficients. In this expression here, 4H2O, we're indicating that we have four different molecules of water, as is illustrated in the diagram. Um, the 2 tells you how many atoms of an element are in the molecule. We call that a subscript. So subscripts tell you how many atoms are in a molecule. In this case, the 2 on H means there are two hydrogens, which are the small white atoms. 
Um, the 4 out in front is known as the coefficient, and it tells you how many molecules there are. There are four separate molecules of water. Or later in this chapter, we'll actually use that um, to indicate how many moles of a chemical are present. And we'll get to, to moles more later on in this chapter. This question asks us to determine how many atoms of oxygen are present in this expression, 5Al2SO4-3, or 5 aluminum sulfates. Um, so we have oxygen present right here as part of the sulfate ion, and it has a subscript of 4. There's also a subscript outside of the parentheses, and there's this coefficient 5 out in front. The shortcut to figuring out how many oxygens are present is to simply multiply all these numbers. We're going to take that coefficient out in front, multiply it times the subscript inside of the parentheses, and then multiply that by the subscript outside of the parentheses. 5 times 4 gives us 20. If we multiply that by 3, we end up with 60. When you are instructed to write a balanced chemical equation, what balanced means is that we have the same number of atoms of all of the elements on both the left side of the arrow and the right side of the arrow. The left side of the arrow refers to reactants. The right side of the arrow refers to products. So typically speaking, the reactants are the things that you mix together to start the reaction, and the products are the things that are made by the chemical reaction. So in this particular case, we have a molecule of methane, which is the uh, CH4. It's the black sphere with the four white ones around it, and two oxygens. Um, each oxygen is diatomic. And then when these atoms react, they produce one carbon dioxide and two waters. Now, in addition to reactants and products, some other vocabulary I want to introduce here is if we are looking at one particular substance, the letters and subscripts that describe that substance are known as a formula. If we are looking at how a bunch of substances react with each other, that whole description of the reaction is called an equation. So let me just write in there. An equation will describe a reaction and a formula describes an individual substance. And remember that in chemistry, the definition of a substance is it's either a compound or an element. So in chemistry, equations are made up of formulas. Kind of weird. Chemical equations contain a huge amount of information uh, packed into a very condensed notation. So one of the things that any chemical reaction will have is it will specify the identity of the reactants and products. That's done by the chemical formulas that make up the equation. We also will see what's known as the mole ratio of the reactants and products. That'll make more sense um, a, a little bit down the road in this chapter, um, but for now that's just the, basically what we're saying there is that we put coefficients out in front of the different formulas as we balance the equation. Frequently, chemical equations also contain information about the physical states. Is the chemical a solid, a liquid, a gas, or is it dissolved up in water, which we call an aqueous solution? Additionally, above and below the arrow, we can write additional information. Is heat required? Does it have to be done at a particular temperature or a particular pressure? Do you have to illuminate it with some kind of light, like ultraviolet light, to get it started? Is there one particular solvent that you need to use? Do you add a catalyst? Is there some other special reagent that needs to be added? So all of that type of information can also be crammed in either above or below the arrow itself. This slide looks really intimidating with all these instructions on it. Um, after we go through the next video and we've worked a bunch of examples, I think this slide will be far less intimidating than it looks at the moment. Um, the whole point here is to give you a step-by-step -step procedure for balancing equations, and the, the kind of funny thing about that is that there really isn't one. Um, I've heard this process described as guess and check, and I think that's a great way to describe it. It's iterative. We have to keep repeating it over and over until finally everything works out. 
So it's really hard to write a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure for that. So um, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is to look at the problem that we're given and pick out what's a reactant, what's a product, and write down the formulas for all of the reactants and all of the products. Everything that you write down as a reactant, if there's more than one of them, needs to be separated by a plus sign. Ditto for the products. And then you separate the reactants from the products with an arrow, which we call the yield sign. The, um, in this step right here, where we are correctly writing the formulas, this is where you write the subscripts. And I strongly recommend, particularly if you're new to balancing equations, that as soon as you draw, as, as soon as you've finished writing all of the formulas, draw a box around each and every formula. The reason for this is to remind yourself that now that you've used the nomenclature rules to write the formulas, you don't want to mess with anything inside of the box. We do not touch subscripts when we balance. When we balance, we're going to add coefficients. And um, when you're looking at an equation, sometimes it's hard to figure out where to start. Um, so you, you really pretty much just pick an element. Um, I often just go left to right so that I don't forget to do one. Um, it just helps me track. Um, one of the things that I do try to, to work in here, though, is if I have a pure element, like just plain old Fe all by itself appears in the equation, or I have O2 gas somewhere, uh, I try to save that for the end, if possible, um, because we can put any coefficient that's needed in front of that pure element without messing up any of the other elements we already balanced. So if I can save a pure element for last, I like to. Um, something else that will pop up from time to time is what I like to call an even-odd problem. We may have a subscript on one side of the equation on an element that's like a 2. So we always get that element in lumps of 2. But on the other side of the equation, we have a subscript script of three, and you can't easily balance an even number with an odd number. So what I like to do is turn the odd number into an even number by starting it with a coefficient of two. And then when we multiply that coefficient of two times the odd number subscript, we end up with an even number of atoms. That often gets us going in the right direction. Um, besides that, there are no um, set easy straightforward formulas. You just have to keep going back and forth over all of your elements until all the elements are balanced. And to be considered correctly balanced, we need to have the smallest coefficients that will do that. If you finish balancing your equation and you look back and you see that every coefficient can be divided by two, then you need to go ahead and reduce them all, very much like writing an empirical formula. So our objectives were to distinguish subscripts from coefficients. So subscripts are the little numbers that describe one element. Coefficients are the big numbers out in front for a whole substance. Reactants are the things you mix together and they come before the arrow. Products are the things that are made by the reaction and they come after the arrow. A formula describes one substance in an equation, and the equation describes the overall chemical reaction. And we looked at a process for balancing, um, which we will do uh, several examples in the next lecture. And um, we also talked about the notation for writing equations, including the plus and the arrow, the yield sign.